A Conservative MP has had the whip suspended over the alleged misuse of campaign funds. An investigation by The Times found that Mark Menzies, the Member of Parliament for Filed in Lancashire, made a late-night phone call to his former campaign manager, demanding £6,500 after saying he was locked up by bad people. Another £14,000 in donations was used to fund private medical expenses for Mr Menzies. Uh, none of the money has been repaid, uh, but uh, in a statement, Mark Menzies said, I strongly dispute the allegations put to me. I have fully complied with all the rules for declarations. As there is an investigation ongoing, I will not be commenting further. I bet he won't. Yeah, and uh, medical expenses, is that what we're calling yeah, yeah, pharmaceuticals well, in general these days? <laughs> the we don't know. We yeah. don't know. Now, this is the latest scandal to engulf the Conservative Party. A dozen Tory MPs have had the whip suspended since the 2019 general election. Uh, we're joined now by a man who knows all about Westminster. He's the brilliant political columnist for The Sun, the veteran political columnist, I should say, because he's been in and around Westminster since the last century, and I am not exaggerating. Uh, Trevor, you know, 11 Tory MPs, and I'm not completely exonerating Labour, they have their sleaze moments as well, but 11 Tory MPs, uh, many of them for sexual reasons, have, have been suspended or lost the whip uh, during this Parliament. Uh, and this latest affair involving Mark Menzies, a story that we heard anonymously a couple of months ago, uh, now we have the name, the MP involved. Uh, I mean, we're asking our audience, you know, what should be done about this escalating sleaze problem. It seems ridiculous. Uh, what should be done? What should Rishi be doing to sort his party out? Well, it's probably too late to sort Rishi's party out at this stage, <laughs> yeah. but I think that... <laughs> These people are already <coughs> embedded, aren't they? Uh, you've got to the point where 11 have had the whip suspended. Well, that's beginning to creep up on the number of people who are retiring or resigning from Parliament for other reasons. So uh, it, there's a huge um, amount of sleaze and scandal going on in the Commons, and I suspect all parties to a greater or lesser degree, and certainly much bigger than I ever encountered when I was covering the House of Commons, it did go on, obviously. There were some quite spectacular stories, many of which have never actually been published. But nothing on this sort of scale or seediness either. I mean, the William Ragg thing, where he actually got praised for his courage, having oh. blabbed about all his fellow members' personal details to a blackmailer. I mean, what level of ju judgment is there if you're giving someone an award for courage for for what he was up to. And uh, it seems like they're all in it together. And I, I think that social media gives an opportunity to people who are far away from home, far away from their families in most cases, who feel able to do just as they please while they're supposed to be serving the public. Trev, do you know... This, what astonishes me about the Menzies situation is the fact that 10 years ago he was caught getting a, a, an escort boy to buy him illegal drugs. You'd think that's it. You wouldn't be reselected for your seat. But there he is. He's still in Parliament 10 years later. And again, like you're saying with the William Rag story, uh, they, the, you know, Hunt turned around and said, oh, wasn't he brave? Wasn't he courageous? Now, something connects these two incidents, which is both men are gay. And I wonder if these were heteros sexual men who were uh, procuring drugs or using female escorts, whether there would be as much lenience in the way they were treated? Well, I, I'm sure that's going on too. But um, what you've got, I think, in this day and age is what would have been seen in the 80s, 90s, and even the early uh, 21st century as some sort of sleaze or even a perversion. Nowadays, every, you can do everything that comes under the um, category of diversity and inclusion. So I think that um, there is a, less of a sort of censure on people's behaviour. Almost anything is forgiven until it becomes flagrantly pub public and deeply embarrassing and damaging to the Conservative Party. But as I say, this goes through all, par all parties because they mix across uh, party lines. It's long been a problem, but it seems to have got far worse with the advent of various forms of drugs and, uh, as I say, social media and photography. And do you, 
does the Tory do the Tories? Because this, this 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 is what we're talking about at the moment. As I say, we should stress that sleaze is not limited just mm. to the Tories. But we've got eleven MPs here who found themselves in all sorts of seedy trouble. Uh, does this mean that? Trevor, that the Tory party has a selection problem. They, the kind of people they're selecting to be MPs, many of them seem they, they, they don't warrant such a position. Uh, perhaps they need to be far more rigorous in who they select to stand to be MPs. Well, it's not a, a question of perhaps. It's absolutely certain that they should be more, more, or more particular. The question is, who does the selection and our favours uh, offered and returned, I don't know. But it does seem extremely odd that you have such a large number suddenly emerging from the woodwork with the conduct which, you know, in normal circumstances would be relegated to some part of the what used to be the news of the world's um, uh, splash. Uh, it is absolutely unbelievable that knowing how dangerous it is to indulge in these things as a public figure, that they almost revel in it. There's some sort of risk factor yeah. involved here in the eyes and minds of politicians. And I remember one very senior politician, he was a cabinet minister, telling me that, um, having been exposed in a similar way, that he had a sort of button in the middle of his forehead and it was just an impossible uh, temptation to resist, to press that button and do something mad. I mean, politics, one could argue, does attract people who like living on the edge, let's say. But do you think there's a sort of wider cultural problem in Parliament, in the UK Parliament, where, you know, you've got lots of MPs sitting, drinking lots of booze before they go and vote late in the evening? I mean, there's very, very few workplaces have a subsidised bar on site. No, you've got a combination. I mean, the thing that counts most of all is opportunity, isn't it? And no one has more opportunity than an MP in Westminster for four or five days of the week, all hours of the day, plenty of uh, justifications for being away from their phone or their desk or whatever, uh, able through social media to link up at a moment's notice with someone who might uh, share their interests. Um, and so opportunity is the great um, leveller here, which means that they're and, 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 you know, it is very strange what people get up to when they can. Uh, is it now, uh, what do you know about Mark Menzies, uh, Trevor? Because what he's done is really unconscionable. I don't know where the hell he was or what the hell he was doing <laughs> when he phoned his poor old campaign <laughs> manager. Who's a 79-year-old lady at 3.15 in the morning, you know, begging for, well, in the end, £6,500. Mm. She had to take it out of her personal account. She had to go to a, you know, a, 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 a cash place and, and just take it out of her personal account uh, and uh, it has since been reimbursed not by Mr Menzi but by campaign do donations. Uh, so first of all, what do you know about Mark Menzies? What kind of a guy is he? And secondly, if he doesn't start paying back these campaign donations, if he doesn't start paying back the Tory party, he's going to get his collar felt, surely. Well, one would hope so. Um, I mean, frankly, I'd never heard of Mark um, Menzies until I picked up my copy of the Times today. And I'm not sure many people, even in the Conservative Party, would have rated him as a, a, a figure of any stature in the party. Uh, you have to put the word allegedly under everything here, but getting a call from your MP at that time of the morning, waking you up and asking for a very significant sum of money that you have to draw out of your savings, which I'm sure she would have made clear to Mark Menzies when he asked her to do so. I mean, all sorts of alarm bells begin to ring here, and you have to wonder, allegedly, what he might have been on when he made that call, because he certainly <laughs> wouldn't have been unaware of the implications of it all and the possibility of it coming out. But, of course, it is all allegedly because he's denied it. I mean, um, the, the, the sheer effrontery of the man to say that this was... Uh, no, that was he was completely innocent of any offence. It beggars belief, as does almost everything about the Conservative Party and its oddball MPs these days. I've just remembered uh, a, a, um, 
another element of this story when it emerged anonymously a couple of months mm. ago. When he made this phone call, according to that story, he was nude. He didn't have any clothes on. <laughs> that was that was part of his predicament. He said, I'm stuck in this flat and I haven't got any clothes on. So uh, he certainly got himself in quite a pickle, didn't he, Trevor? He did, and uh, there he was, nude, surrounded by bad actors who were trying to get money out of him. I mean, you, you can probably fill in some of the gaps on uh, out of your own imagination, can't you? God, I don't want to, Trevor. I'm, I'm harrowed <laughs> enough as it is. Yeah, yeah. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to protect ourselves from yeah. that. Uh, Trevor, great to talk to you as always. That's Thanks, Trevor Kavanagh, the Sun's uh, political uh, columnist.